Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Two Legs. This is episode number 244. Wow. I'm Andy Nichols, one of the co-hosts of Two Legs, and joining me as always is one of the co-founders of Two Legs and my partner, Mr. Tom Hunyadi. Good evening, Tom. Good evening, Andy. Excited to be back and starting doing another episode of Two Legs. And uh, as you can see, we've got a, another wonderful guest and we're going to be talking with her. And uh, yeah, right. <laughs> so joining us today, we are very honored and humbled to have Sirius XM's own from the Beatle channel, Caitlin Larkin, joining us for episode number 244. Hi, Caitlin. How are you doing? Hey, guys. I am so good. I'm so excited to be here. How are you guys doing tonight? Doing we well. are great. Doing we are great. I feel like uh, over the last couple of years, we have connected on many levels at fests between New York and Chicago, yeah. and uh, we've been on a couple of panels together. Oh and, yeah. And um, we're over the same. We're all kind of over the same age, so it's really nice to uh, kind of connect and talk for real, just with us, because I feel like we are simpatico on so many levels with our family. Oh yeah. For sure. No, it's nice to have other uh, folks, you know, your age that like you can really relate to, especially, right. you know, how we grew up with the Beatles kind yeah. of being second gen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, Caitlin, if you, if you don't subscribe to Sirius, Caitlin is the uh, the host of the, uh, uh, on on Sirius XM every day. She can be heard on uh, the Sirius channel from 12 to 1 p.m. Eastern Monday through Friday. She's always got cool themes, and you know, if you follow her on Instagram, she'll always say, "Hey, today I'm going to play this, and I'm going to play this," and she gives you a little bit of a nugget of, you know, some surprises. It's always enjoyable. So I always like to see, oh, what's she going to play today? You know, I always like to look and see that. Got got to get the people's interested. Got to give them a little right. tease. Gotta you do you and you do, which is always great to see. I'm like, oh, she's like, today we're going to give a play a song that John wrote for Ringo, and we're and I'm like, oh, right. which one is it going to be? Exactly. So that's <laughs> that's why you got to tune in and find out. Right. That's Cooking right. Well, before... love. All right. Go ahead, Tom. Go? <laughs> yeah. I played that the well, we other got... week. We have some news items yeah. here that we're going to kind of talk about. Three things of note for news. Before we jump into uh, the episode here with Caitlin, I'm going to channel my inner Ken Michaels, but I'm going to be real quick about it. Sadly, it was announced that after 18 years, the yeah. Beatles Cirque du Soleil love show is closing at the Mirage. Damn. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. so upset about this news. It broke my heart when I found out. Have either of you guys seen it? I'm sure you have, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it twice, actually. I saw it in uh, 2008. It was actually the, it was a Beatle Fest like associated thing. Um, I was a what? Because it opened in 2007, right? Yes. Yeah. So it was like the one year anniversary, and they did a fest in Vegas around it. So you got to go to the fest and go to the Cirque du Soleil show, and that was my graduation from high school present. Nice. Thanks, mom. Yeah. Um, and then when my wife and I first started dating, the first trip we ever took together was to Las Vegas and we went and saw the show together. Nice. So, uh, yeah, Tom, the, you, you saw it more than once or no? I saw it twice. I went for my 40th birthday in 2013 and then, um, last year for my 50th birthday. So, um, right. So you would just saw it fairly recently. Yeah. Yeah. So it's fairly recently. They, they made some tweaks, um, from that initial, n initial run. Um, it's, it's a very moving. If you haven't seen it yet, oh. you know, you still have a little bit more time you do. Uh, to, do, to do so. But, you know, I, I'll tell you what, that, that first time it was so emotionally powerful. Oh my God. Uh, it really to, is to, to see this. And, you know, people don't believe when I tell them, I was like, I was, I was literally tears were running down my eyes while I'm watching this. You know, I found it to be very moving, very, it was, very especially very at the, especially at yeah. the end of the show. Oh my mm -hmm. God, like floodgates open at the yeah. end, right? You know, yeah. And then, you know, going to going there with my uncle last year, who was, you know, kind of like my inspiration of becoming a Beatles fan because, you know, he was a Beatles fan uh, in the late 60s and into the 70s. Well, it still is, but he was kind of like my teacher. So to to have that experience of, of seeing uh, that show with him, because we had talked about seeing it. Uh, you know, when it first came out, we had the love album. We were, we were just, we just loved that, you know, connecting with the, with the love album. And then, um, and then finally getting to see it. So, you know, 17 or 18 years later, however long it's been, um, was, 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 was awesome. Loved it. Um, an incredible run. I got to see it myself in 2009. Yeah. Uh, I went with my friends for a trip to Vegas, and I said, you guys want to go see the love show? And they were like, nah, I said, well, screw it. I'll go by myself. And I did. <laughs> nice. 
Uh, the Beatles' love has been seen by more than 11 and a half million guests since opening in 2006, said the CEO, Stephanie Lefebvre. It's been an honor for us all at Cirque du Soleil to collaborate with the Beatles and Apple on what can only be described as a masterpiece. We're grateful to creators, cast, crew, and all involved in bringing this show to life. And we know the Beatles' love will live on long after the final bow. Tickets to the final uh, performances through June 29th are available online. And tickets for the final week of performances in July will be available in the coming weeks. So, yeah, that's the end of an era, man. Really is. Leave it to Hard Rock to ruin something again. Right. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a disgruntled uh, former Hard Rock employee. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, oh, Fair leave enough. it to those turds to ruin something amazing as per usual. Those right. guys. We've just... got the Beatles, but we're going to come in and replace them. Good. Nice. Nice yeah. move. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, uh, so will, will you go? Will anybody go see it? Will you guys make one more effort to go see it before it closes or not feasible? You don't think? I don't know if it's feasible. Like in a perfect world, I absolutely would. If the opportunity does come up, I will. But I, I just don't know if it's possible. Yeah, I think I think two times was 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 good enough. They also have if I don't know if you guys have it. There's that All Together Now DVD, which kind of gives you the making of love and how the show came together. Yeah, I don't know if you have that, Tom. Caitlin, I'm sure yeah, she's I nodding, so I know it, yeah. she does. Yeah, they, they sell that in the gift shop. So yes, yeah. So you, um, what a magical time that was to hear the Beatles mashed up. I mean, because that was really the first time any of this stuff happened, and it was like such a ear opening thing to hear all this music intertwined and hearing all of this interwoven. Just tremendous yeah I, it's one of my favorite things um so i got the love cd when it came out in 2006 yep. i think it was a hanukkah gift and immediately i got the nearest cd player and i put it in and i was just blown away and i know there are so many beatles purists out there and oh man it's just so good I, I that's the only way i can describe it and i like how in the all together now documentary ringo's like no make it crazier make it crazier and i'm like no you gotta make it even crazier than that like they went too yeah. soft on some parts they should have gone even crazier yeah the crazier the better so mm. true and let us not forget that the brainchild of the show was none other than george harrison george harrison yes yep. so yeah. one of his last things he went, went wanted to go see to fruition in his lifetime so Thank you, George, for and team for giving us that show. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Also of in newsworthy, this actually dropped on Forbes. This is an article that was published in Forbes magazine, written by Hugh McIntyre. It said Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr may have another collaboration in the works. Interesting. Mm. And he quoted a post on Instagram from Zach Starkey, mm. and Zach says around 3 p.m. on the day of the Who and Guns N' Roses show at Rock and Rio. Duff and I went into a local studio and cut bass for a cover of a T-Rex, Children of the Revolution. Original track is by T-Rex and I'm playing on my post. My dad played drums in L.A. while I fudged the bass and in Rio, Duff cut bass. A couple of weeks after the tour, we cut guitars in New York City with Slash, sent the track with Shh, guide vocal to Elton, who played amazing piano. Shh, went to hang with Axel and said he'd like to sing it. Wow, Axel killed it. Amazing vocals. He's mixing track the track now i believe and we will auction the record for teen cancer without greedy bean counters wanting 75 percent mm. i won't say what label it is but this is for kids it's produced by me and shh, it's a full album with more than one beetle a smith a pretender and ashcroft and iggy and many more soon wow. come wow what is that mm. Don't sounds know. awesome <laughs> anybody heard this yet no 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 mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> that that was just published just the other day in Forbes. So a charity single of some sorts that Paul and Ringo and Elton and other people are going to be on. Okay. I'll take it. Yeah. Why not? I mean, you know, obviously if it was like Beatle related, I'm sure this would, that would have been, you know, heavily guarded and it would have been in Forks Knox and you know, nobody, I mean, that would have been very hush hush. So, I mean, as a charity single, I mean, yeah. I mean, why not? Hell, that's a, that's an all-star crew. I just, you know, Gun, Guns N' Roses working with Paul and Ringo and Elton is an, inter an interesting combination. But. Right. Well, you know, Elton and, and Axel have that uh, have that uh, collaboration there on the the uh, Freddie Mercury uh, uh, concert, and then obviously Guns N' Roses covered "Live and Let Die." So, True. you know, there's there's some there's some connections there. 
for sure. And if you're going to cover, you know, Children of the uh, Revolution, I feel like Axel is the only person who could really get that vocal down, too. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, interesting. And we know Ringo and T Rex loved each other because Ringo's, you know, love of the word yes. boogaloo. Yes. <laughs> he was in so yes. much of those early Ringo tracks, he just nicked from well, T Rex he, he, and Mark he Bowen. Directed, he, he directed that documentary, that T Rex documentary as well. Yeah. yeah. And lastly, awesome. and by the time this actually, our episode drops, this event will have already happened because it's happening tomorrow night. We're recording this on Wednesday, April 10th, but tomorrow night. Yep. Paul McCartney, amongst a host of many other people, the Eagles, Brandy Carlisle, Kenny Chesney, John Bon Jovi, are all performing at the uh, Hollywood Bowl in a tribute to Jimmy Buffett um, called Keep the Party Going, a tribute to Jimmy Buffett. So that's tomorrow night. And one of our um, fans and viewers and one of our uh, the best mates of all time, Joan Borelli, she's a member of Fans on the Run. She's there at the show. Yep, so we're going right. to hopefully get a rundown on from the show on her at some point, maybe as a special episode, maybe as an episode, um, yeah, but we'll she's see. there and we're not surprised she's there, Tom, right? Yeah, we are, we are not surprised she's there. I mean, listen, Holly, I've worked there several times to, as a, as a uh, tour catering chef and uh, it's, it's a magical place and concerts there are just fantastic. Everybody's going to have a great time at that show. Mm. Wish you could go, Caitlin, right? Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I've never uh, been over to the Hollywood Bowl, so that'd be oh, you know amazing yeah. in of itself. Pretty it's historic. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm guessing there's no live stream option for this show, right? I haven't seen I that really pr no, promoted I, anywhere. I haven't heard anything yeah. about it. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure some uh, some footage will get on YouTube. Uh, you know, some fan footage will, will make its way on there. Uh, hopefully, uh, like you said, Joan will will pop on soon and and, and tell us all about it. And um, looking forward to it. Yeah, and, and is this the precursor for a little warm-up tour for Paul for this for 2024? We don't know. We we just don't know. We'll have to wait and see. We hope we'll hope, we're like, hoping and we're yeah, crying and waiting like, and hoping as they sang yeah. on Anthology One, but right. we don't know. I feel like it would have been announced already. Um, you know, look at the ELO. I mean, they announced in there that that tour is not until you know what uh, you know September uh, October. Mm. You know, so it's. I feel like if he was going to tour, we were we were already been getting some hints about it, and or and or an announcement. Yeah, those uh those UK fans, they are not happy. No, <laughs> that's all I see online is those guys. Like, when's he gonna finally come back here? Because what he was scheduled to go in twenty twenty, wasn't he? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And that got canceled. That postponed. It got canceled. So that means right. it wasn't going to get made up. Yeah. So. I know I feel bad for those guys, you know, Same. I mean, as much as I want Paul just to, you know, stay here and tour the States, you know, it's, uh, it's not fair to those folks over there. Oh, well, they got was Glastonbury in June of 2022 and that was it. And that was a hell of a concert, but, um, they're like, where's our tour? You know, where's yeah. our home tour? This is, you live here, man. <laughs> So that's going to wrap up the news. Uh, nothing too else crazy, but there was a, there was a couple of headlines, but jumping in, Caitlin, please tell us, uh, about your background. Um, I mean, some of us know because we, we've, I mean, we've been on panels together, but tell us about your introduction to the Beatles where you, and things like that and where you started. Sure. So I always say that, uh, I, I came out of the womb going, woo. Um, <laughs> Sorry, it's a bad joke. Um, no, a Beatles fan since birth. Um, I've told the story a million times, but for anybody who hasn't heard it, uh, basically, if it weren't for the Beatles, I would not have been born. Um, mm -hmm. My parents met at a bar in 1975. Uh, my dad sees my mom, needs a little liquid courage to go up to her and ask her out on a date. Uh, he finally goes up to her and says, you are the most beautiful woman I have ever seen. Can I please take you out on Saturday? And my mom's like, no, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I don't I don't know you. And my sure. dad's next line is, well, if you knew me, would you go out on a date with me? And she's like, no. <laughs> so my dad, defeated, turns around, walks away. And then at the last second, goes back around and goes, I bet you don't even like the Beatles. My mom goes, they're my favorite band. Of course I do. So because of the Beatles, I and also my older brother are literally on this earth. Ah, oh, nice. That's a good reason <laughs> to do that. Um, yeah. So uh, from there, it, it was basically just kind of growing up in your typical Beatle maniac household. Um, 
I was obsessed with the movie Yellow Submarine by the time I was three. It was something that I was asking to watch every single day. Anytime my parents and my brother and I were on long road trips in the car, my dad had made a Beatles mixtape that was always playing anytime we were in the car. So I just kind of discovered the music organically like that, just on repeat over and over. And I enjoyed it and I loved it. And having that association of the music and the films kind of made me fall in love with them even more. I was like, well, I want to see everything they've ever done. So my dad would play for me a hard day's night, magical mystery tour, help even the documentaries, you know, the complete Beatles back in the day. Um, Imagine Mm -hmm. John Lennon. Mm -hmm. I was watching these things all the time time absorbing them every time and taking something new away from it every time you watched it right and so by the time i was four years old i I could tell you anything and everything about the beatles right but but did they also incorporate solo stuff as well or was it just more more or less the beatles it was more or less the beatles until i got a little bit older um Mm. my parents were both heavily into lennon So that was kind of the only solo music I really knew up until I started doing digging on my own. Okay. Mm. Yeah, my, which is so funny that, you know, Paul has become my favorite Beatle. I was <laughs> just going to ask you, do you have a favorite one? Because I wasn't sure if you could answer it or not. <laughs> so, okay, usually I would give the typical, I can't choose answer. I, right. I did that my entire life. And only maybe as of recently in the last year, I've been like, okay, come on, Kate, you know that if you had to like put it, you know, out there, you're making like a a playlist of your favorite solo Beatles songs. Who do you have in there predominantly more than the others? And it was always Paul. But Mm. uh, honest, you know, if you would have asked me who was my favorite Beatle when I was like five, I would have told you Ringo. Mm. Um, I'm a drummer. And he was a huge influence on me. So it was always Ringo, Ringo, Ringo. When I was an angry, angsty teenager, it was all about Lennon. That is all I was doing. I was in my John Lennon phase. Give me some truth, yeah. damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would just, uh, this is a true story. I would just listen to the song How over yeah. and over and just cry. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, when I was, I was, uh, what was I? I was 15 in 88 when the Imagine John Lennon movie came out and I got the soundtrack. I got the book. I went to the theater to see the movie. And then, yeah, that song, when I was introduced, I was introduced to that song from that movie. And I was just like, wow. And and Lennon was our, my first, you know, as, as a solo, as getting into the solo stuff, it was Lennon at first. Yeah. yeah. And we uh, all, I think all, a lot of us were yeah. of, of this generation you know, in our late thirties, early forties, you know, like that, that in our forties, that's, that's where we gravitated toward because he was such a, a presence there, you know, 10 years after his passing, there was so much, I mean, a film, the books, um, the, the box. Yeah. Literally everything was Lennon focused in the nineties, in the eighties and the, in the lady in the eighties and the early nineties, it was very heavy John. So it was not, it was, it was easy to see why, younger impressionable fans like us could get caught up into it because it was he was everywhere even though he had been yeah. gone for years he was still so present in our lives right. yeah for sure and um i didn't discover mccartney's solo stuff until wingspan came out in 2001 okay and okay. i was seeing those commercials everywhere yeah <laughs> just seeing the wingspan commercials everywhere and i was just like wait 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 a minute you mean to tell me, yeah, that's the one yeah. that Paul, like I knew that Paul had a solo career and did other things, but I was like, wait a minute. He was in an entirely different band altogether. I had no idea. Oh. Wow. My, Cause my parents were Lennon heads. They never yeah. played McCartney solo stuff except from the McCartney album. So I okay. knew like, maybe I'm amazed and stuff like that. Or, um, you know, you'd hear coming up, on the radio so i always knew that paul had done things it's just that nobody ever gave it to me and showed it to me i had to seek it out on my own so i have an interesting question for you then okay because you discovered paul's music around this time you look at a compilation called wingspan and do you think every song on here is a wing song or i did at the time i did at the time because i didn't know any better (laughs) (laughs) 
And it's funny, I, I've even discussed that on my radio show for some right. Wednesday Wings segments. Um, uh, I did recently, like two weeks ago, I did Hey Diddle. Yeah. Right. And so no. I, was, I was talking about that and I was like, is it wings or is it not? So it's, right. uh, and even with coming up, is it wings or is it not? Because technically, both. it's both. Yeah, it's both. It's both. You know, with, yeah. with like throwing No More Lonely Nights on there or Pipes of Peace, it's like, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> like, I'm right? curious. It's you must have been like, this is all wings. And you must have been like, this is all wings I stuff. Did. I did. I had no clue. <laughs> See? I had no clue. And then um, as I got into my late 20s, I really started appreciating George Moore. And I, I think that comes with age. So, it does. I but think if, so. Yeah, but if I were to really, like, if somebody's going to, you know, put a bottle to my head and be like, who's your favorite Beatle? It's McCartney. Just for the pure fact that there's probably just so much, there's so much to just dive into over a cross of 54 years of work. And, and not even that. I think I'm just really a pop music enthusiast. Mm. Okay. I love, I love pop music. I love up tempo. I love things with beautiful melodies and harmonies. And Paul just kind of checks all those boxes for me. Saw you. Yes or no? No. Ah! Ah, uh, I knew we were, is, I knew we were best funny, buds. Though, I knew it. Which is funny though, because when you do hear it, it does get stuck in your head. <laughs> yes. You know, and so I, I appreciate it for the catchiness factor, but just when I first heard it, I was just like, nah, man, this ain't for me. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Did you find yourself as you got older though, and getting more mature with your, your styles and your hat, like obviously getting more into George Moore. Going back to Lennon is like such a he only has a so finite amount of material material that like while you grew up with it and your parents were bona fide Lennon fans, yeah, it's like it holds a weird window in your heart of like the past that like you have to you can only go back to it so often because you know it so well. No, I mean I feel like I can go back to it any time, and then I can also appreciate it for what it is now. And mm. it's funny the the Lennon songs that I gravitate towards to mostly now are things like from Milk and Honey, mm -hmm. uh, Nobody Told Me. Um, right. Yeah. Why am I blanking? <laughs> it's just it's a lot. Um, borrow time. Stepping you out. Know, stepping out. Thank you. I don't want to um, face it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to face it. I love that song. You want to like, save I, humanity, but it's people that you just can't stand. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm really into my Milk and Honey era right now <laughs> when it comes to Lennon. Uh, but my favorite Lennon solo song of all time has always been Number Nine Dream. Oh, I, just, I, just, I discovered that song when I was in the sixth grade. And I used to just listen to it over and over and over. So it definitely more the poppy, you mm. know, stuff is kind of what I've always just gravitated towards yeah, musically. That, that yeah, that guitar from Jesse Ed Davies is is magical, and I just love mm -hmm. that dream like, you know, aspect of the song. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, it's put gorgeous. Like put you like in a trance when you listen to that song sometimes. Mm -hmm. That I have literally said those words on the air. It yeah. really does. It's weird. John Lennon's number nine dream. Um, what? Oh, geez, what else? Was it? Uh, Peter Gabriel's "In Your Eyes" and Roxy mm -hmm. Music's um, "More Than This" are three songs that anytime I hear them, that's it. I'm done. Like, pray those <laughs> never come on while I'm driving in the car because I will crash. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And how about? Um, I mean, we haven't touched on it yet, but like your your foray into Ringo's solo career. Are you like all in? Have you like like have you did you just did you devour his solo career as much as you yeah. did the other three, or not really? I definitely haven't devoured it, but I started, so when I was still making YouTube videos and stuff, I had gotten into it more because um, I had done a small video series where I was going to review every solo Beatles album in chronological order, and I only maybe got like three or four albums in at the time, you know. Um, but when I was working on doing that project, I was listening to so much Ringo, right. and then getting the job on Sirius, I have a plethora of things right. to listen to in yeah. our library. And that's when I was kind of listening to um, Time Takes Time. And I'm just mm. like, oh my God, this is such an amazing album. Like, why aren't people talking about this more? And uh, people, you know, talk a lot of crap about Ringo's Rotogravure. 
I love that record. That's a great, great record. I love that record. Yeah. I, I've I played Lady Gay on the show uh, yesterday, and I'm just mm. like, I, I I don't understand why people are sleeping on some of these albums. They're great. Let Let's jump into the YouTube factor because I mean I know if I had it in the '80s, I mean that's probably would have been I probably would have been doing it. Um, then let's talk about you getting, you know, YouTube channel, making up your mind saying, this is what I want to do, uh, what you want to talk about. I mean, and did you, and besides your, your folks, did you have other people around you that liked the Beatles or, or did you find that this is what you had to do to make that connection with other people? So I was always that kid who was the weirdo for listening to old people music growing yeah. up. Um, yeah, I was kind of like the, the cheese stands alone. I was all by myself in that regard until I got into high school. And that's kind of when my friends started coming around. Actually, no, no, I'm lying. Even before that, when Beatles one came out, 2000. That's kind, that was kind of the tipping point. I was in fifth grade at that point. And a lot of my friends' parents had gotten the CD and were playing it in the car. And so I remember a few of my classmates going, hey, you know, some of these songs are actually pretty good. And I'm like, I know I've been telling you this since we were in kindergarten. Where have you been? Where have you been for the last 10 years? I know yeah. that. <laughs> and so it kind of started around then. Um, but mostly it was in high school when my friends were kind of really coming around to it. And they're like, you know, I, I think I want to give the Beatles a try. What should I do? And I was like, here, this is what you're going to do. I have Abby Road on CD. What you're going to do is you're going to take this home tonight. You're going to put on headphones and you're going to listen to this all the way through without skipping any songs. Come back to me tomorrow and let me know what you think. And I had like a 90% uh, success rate. I only had one friend who was like, I don't like this. Well, you can't win. You can't win them all. <laughs> Which is so weird because that particular friend is a huge James Taylor fan. Uh, and I was just like, I can't comprehend how you can love and be obsessed with James Taylor and not like the Beatles. Uh, right. Anyway, she's weird, but I love her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that that's kind of how that happened. So it wasn't. It, it was always mostly family. My entire family on both sides, huge Beatles fans. Mm. I would say everybody except for my paternal grandfather were all obsessed with the Beatles. Um, my, my paternal grandfather, he was mostly into like, uh, big band stuff, Glenn Miller, uh, Tommy Dorsey, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he wasn't very into rock and roll, but, um, you know, we definitely got the record collecting gene from him because he loved collecting 78s. Mm. And, uh, by the time he passed away, um, he had accumulated over 10,000. Oh, whoa. Yeah. So wow, that's a collection. Very, oh yeah. Very big into record collecting. And uh, he definitely passed that down to his children and then, you know, us yeah. as grandchildren. So of course, carrying yeah. that torch and running with it. Oh yeah, right. for sure. Music is a big, big part of uh, both sides of my family, uh, whether it be, you know, collecting and listening on my father's side or my mother's side where my grandparents are, were the type of people. If you said some random line, in conversation that would trigger a song lyric and then they'd start singing. So m music has always been very prevalent in my life. Oh, oh. Love it. Like, like, like yeah. it has for a lot of us. And yeah. uh, I love that. Um, mm -hmm. Caitlin on your bio on uh, the series site, it talks about how you had your TikTok account and how it was sure. discovered by Apple. Please tell us about a, why a TikTok account and the evolution of that. Yeah, sure. So I guess it all really began like, um, with Tom, uh, we were talking about YouTube. So 2017, I got into, you know, the Beatles YouTube community by seeing guys like, you know, me and Mr. Mayo, um, Matt Street, Beatle Brad, um, yeah. making videos. And I was like, wait a minute. I have a massive Beatles collection. Why don't I show it off? <laughs> So those guys inspired me to get into YouTube. So I started making videos, got myself a little bit of a following. Yep. And, um, you know, that's how I got introduced to you guys through the YouTube community as well. Yep. And um, then in 2020, I was hanging out at a friend's house. And she was like, have you have you been on TikTok yet? 
And I'm like, no, I heard that's mostly for like Gen Z and younger. You know, is that really something that I would want to do? She's like, it's hysterical. I find myself just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling for hours, just looking at, you know, mindless content. And I was like, all right, let me see what this TikTok is all about. So I go on there and I see, you know, you know, the cute little trends or taking people's audio and kind of putting your own spin on it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there's really not much Beatles stuff on here. And I was like, I wonder if I could, you know, make Beatles content and if that would go well on here. Um, within the first week, I, I made two really dumb videos <laughs> <laughs> just like randomly here in uh, my office here and they went viral i couldn't believe it um i i had taken someone's audio of um it's like oh i have my my grandparents original copy of abbey road and this is what happens when i put it on the turntable and that um has got a melody and mm -hmm. i had that song plays instead of hearing come together oh. and so i just took my copy of abbey road and put it on my turntable and it got like three hundred thousand views mm. and i was just like wait really? what yes <laughs> and i was like oh my god i'm having more success on youtube in, in a week then I'm having three years at that point making YouTube videos. You mean more success on TikTok, on TikTok. than you yes, have YouTube, yes, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. And so I was like, I think there's something to this here. So I was like, well, what could I do every single day that could be different and engaging? And so I started making on this day in Beatles history videos so that it was something new every single day. I would put, you know, pictures behind me in the green screen mode and talk about Beatles history. And it was just going viral every single time. And I was just like, OK, this is pretty cool. So I did that for about a year. And I was like, well, am I gonna am I gonna just start this over again? And to me, that just seemed really boring. And I didn't want to do it again. Cause I thought that was kind of a cheap shot. Like, yes, I could keep getting popular and maybe people who didn't see it before would see it now. But I I my heart wasn't in it. I just didn't mm. want to do it over again. Right. So I was trying to think of other things that I could do. And so I've had a background in radio for a little bit. Um when I was in college, I was an intern for the uh, South Florida morning show, the KVJ show. Uh, I did that for a few months and just always loved radio. Um, Joe Johnson from Beetle Brunch. Yep. He's a mentor of mine. I met him at that Las Vegas Fest in 2008. And um, he's always been amazing and giving me tips. And I used to help behind the scenes with social media for Beetle Brunch. Um. And so radio has always been a passion of mine. And uh, in 2018, I got a job in radio locally in Orlando, kind of just doing promotions. And five months working in promotions, I was bugging every single DJ that I worked with, picking their brain, learning how the business works and what does this button do. Um, and so five months into it, they were like, hey, you want you want an on-air traffic position? And I was like, really? After five months of just being in promotions? Hell yeah, I do. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. So, um, you know, just doing traffic reports, uh, commercials, weather reports. You know, I didn't care. It was on air. And because of that, that taught me how to edit audio, uh, produce and mix audio. And so when I had learned all of those skills and that one particular day I'm sitting at work going, what could I do on TikTok? There was a trend going on at the time where this guy was doing a dance to a Lizzo song every single day until she commented. Mm. And, at, and at this point in time, the Beatles themselves were not on TikTok. So I was like, wait, I wonder if Sirius XM is on TikTok. They had only just made an account like a few months earlier. It was brand new. Oh. And I was like, this is it. This is my in. I'm going to make fake Beatles channel breaks every single day until they comment or like it or whatever. Just get acknowledged. So I started doing it. And once again, 
the magic of TikTok, they went viral. And so it was about nine days into this little campaign of mine. I get a DM on Twitter from Adam Saltzman, who is the program director of the Beatles channel. And he was like, hey, I love your passion. Uh, would you like to set up a meeting? And I'm just like, wait, what? <laughs> set up a meeting? What are you talking about? Um, so he and I had a phone conversation. He's like, I really love what you're doing. Um, and then at this particular point, the Beatles did make a TikTok account. So it was kind of Ooh. newsworthy that mm. they were on TikTok. And they're like, we would love for you to be able to come on the Fab Forum and tell your story. And I'm like, oh, my God, I get to talk to Dennis Elsis. Are you kidding me? Drop <laughs> like, the mic. Yeah, I was like, holy crap. OK, I'll, I'll be there. And so with that, they were like, OK, so we want you to go on the Fab Forum and talk about TikTok. But then we want you to do a My Fab Four. Now, right. I want you to think of this not as a normal My Fab Four, because this he basically said, this is going to be your audition. Mm. And I was just like, I'm like crapping my pants. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like, this is basically going to be your audition. We're going to hear what you sound like introducing songs on the air. And usually when they do a My Fab Four, um, they'll pick a few people and they'll run people like different fans through the entire week. Mm. They gave me every single My Fab Four time slot to see like how it would do. Oh, e yeah. For each time. And um, so that was unbelievable to have me come up every so often over that week. And um, do you remember what four songs you picked? Yeah. So I did it kind of chronologically because I, there's no way that you can really pick four songs. So I kind of just did things that were, you know, biographical to me. So to kind of go through the um, Yellow Submarine early years, I picked It's All Too Much. Mm. Um, I picked eight days a week because that was the very first song I ever learned on guitar. I picked and I love her and I dedicated that to my wife. And then I had picked it's only love because that was a song that I played on stage at the cavern club when I went to Liverpool in 2019. So all things that kind of, you know, really meant a lot to me in my life. You know, are they truly my favorite Beatles songs ever? No, not really. I mean, I love them all. But, you know, that's how I was able to choose because otherwise I wouldn't have been able to do it. Mm. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, so they have me do the MyFab 4. It goes really well. And a week or two later, I get a text from Adam, the program director. And he's like, hey, um, do you have a minute to hop on a Zoom call with me, Vice President Lou Simon, and Jeff Jones from Apple? Huh. And I was just like, are you, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm dropping everything I'm doing. I'll be right there. I'll be right there. I'll yeah. be right there. So this is, I wish that they had recorded this because I wish I could have had this for the rest of my life. So yeah. I'm sitting in this seat. I'm sitting in this seat exactly where I am right now here in my studio, in my office, pulled up the laptop, just like I have it here. And so I go to click on this meeting and I'm like sweating profusely <laughs> and thinking that, oh, maybe, you know, maybe Adam will be the first person that's in the room or maybe I'll be the first person that's in the in the Zoom room. I open it and it's Jeff Jones. Jeff, of course, of course. <laughs> and I'm dying like Jeff Jones can see my my beetle room. Like right. what the hell is happening here? And what was so, what were those what were those few seconds like while you're waiting for other people to enter the room? Uh, nerve wracking, absolutely nerve wracking. You know, just kind of doing the basic small talk. Oh, where are you based out of? Where are you from? Where do you live? You yeah. know, stuff like that. And then, of course, you know, the meeting starts, and you know, they honestly, guys, this was like two and a half years ago, so. I wish I could remember every single thing, which is why I said I wish that they recorded this because it, yeah. it was. I mean, but like they, they basically they offered you on the spot, right? 
pretty much they they gave me a good long little spiel you know talking me up about you know um how they really appreciate my you know commitment and um you know my energy and stuff like that and then jeff jones he turned to the camera and he said we'd like to welcome you to the family oh. and i lost my mind and i cried my eyes out oh, I <laughs> bet he said welcome to the family <sighs> And if you would have told four-year-old Caitlin that she would actually be, in a way, working for the Beatles, you it's it's yeah. it's unbelievable. I still don't believe it to this day. I really don't. <laughs> it blows but my mind. It like was, it's but... funny, right, right here on my on my desk, I actually have um this year's company Christmas card, <laughs> season's greetings oh. from Apple. <laughs> From Apple. From now Apple. Yeah. yeah. You know, like signed by the, you know, the whole team at, at Apple. It's an official, you oh. know, company Christmas card. Like, you know, I can't believe You're, that. You, that's you. You, yeah. you. you did it. Did Magical. It. Yeah. I mean, you must be like sometimes like, is this real? Did this really happen to me? I seriously still... I don't believe it's real. I don't at all. And I, I record my show and I talk about the Beatles and I'm like, I'd be doing this anyway. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was doing this on YouTube. I was doing this on TikTok. And before that, I was giving Beatles VIP tours for Hard Rock Cafe for nine years. I've been right. talking about the Beatles for a really, really, really long time. And to be like, oh, you're on a nationally syndicated satellite radio station and people all over the country and in canada hear you every day i'm like no it's just my mom that's listening nobody else listens <laughs> like, well, she... as, as as paul saying you never know who may be listening to you yeah and your parents must have been so proud of you though i mean yeah. to come yeah. full circle i mean yeah. my god yeah. yeah i mean you guys met my mom at the fest yep. and yep. that was great yeah, yeah you know she, she's just like watching my beetle girl go that's what she always says go my beetle girl go <laughs> <laughs> so you started in 20 at the end of 2020 on the channel or was it when did uh, you no, start I, in 2020 I, I started uh in 2022 january 2022 2022 was my is when you started yeah. so it was pa after the pandemic so you've been on the channel for just a little over two years now yes wow. sir all right well let's let's talk about putting a show together sure let's 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 talk about and then you know how that came to be and and you know and you know did you put a lot of work in you know put homework in so obviously we don't know everything talk about you know your your research and and what you know how you put your show together. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So it really is a collaborative effort between myself and my program director because I am literally just one measly hour. So I have to be sure that I'm not stepping on any of Chris Carter's toes. Or if we have any specialty programming after me, like if there's um, a Way Beyond Compare with Frangione, mm -hmm. or if there's um, Dark Horse Radio with Laura Cantrell, or an Across the Universe with Dennis Elsis, we have to be mindful of not playing things that maybe they'll play on those shows that day, or okay. anything that Meg Griffin's got going on later in the day. There's got to be space. So, you know, got to just be mindful of things like that. So basically, my program director will give me kind of like a a little a little playlist, if you will, and kind of map out like, OK, you're going to have a couple songs here, then you're going to talk here and then there's going to be a couple of other songs here and you're going to talk here. And then he kind of gives me a list to kind of go through. Mm. And there are a lot of rules that we have to abide by. And so there are people that will email all the time. Well, why aren't you playing this? Or why can't you play this? Or why can't you do this? Or why can't you play these songs? Why you're hearing what you're hearing. And so every hour we have to play a solo song from each Beatle. You will always hear a solo John, Paul, George, and Ringo. Mm -hmm. You will also hear an influence. And you yeah. will hear a cover every single hour. So we have to abide by those guidelines. Right, right. Yep. And basically, that's kind of just how we all put it together. And if there's a special anniversary or a celebrity birthday 
like, or an album anniversary. I try and put all of those things kind of in together and make a cohesive one hour show well, about it. Cause it goes so fast. I mean, the it hour does. just flies by. Yeah, it does for sure. Now, a lot of people email me and they're like, Caitlin, why do you get only one hour? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> That's what I was given. You so, know, what well, you got to do now. Now you got to do TikTok videos saying you want more than one hour. <laughs> Look, I'm just blessed to have a job, man. Yeah, I know. Hey, <laughs> you, if it was 30 minutes, you'd take it. I mean, come on. I mean, if it was it's, five it's, minutes, I would take it. it yeah. Yeah. Do, um, do, oh, if awesome. I introduce one song, I would take it. Do you get yeah. to pick the songs, though, or is it your, pro, your program director does? It's a collaborative effort. So if like he like I said, he, gi he gives me an he gives me an outline, and I can kind of take things out and put things in. Okay. Yeah. yeah and you cool. do that like the day of the show, the night before. Uh, it's usually like a couple of days before he'll give me the initial rundown, but then I can change it as it goes, and I don't do anything really until the morning of. So the okay. morning of is when I do my prep. So usually oh. I get up at like 7.30 in the morning. I'm here at my desk working by 8 o'clock. So from 8 to by the time, you know, the show uh, I air at noon, I'm working. Because I'm Chris Chris goes till what, 11 or 11.30? 11. 11. Right, so, right. So then you have, and then you come on at 12, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. so... I wake up that morning. I make sure that everything is prepped. Everything's in our computer system, ready to go. I have, you know, what I want to talk about. Is there new Beatles news that, you know, happened? And, you know, is everything going according to where it's supposed to be? And then, bam, noon. There I am. That's great. Caitlin, That's have you had a chance to actually physically meet and interact with other hosts like 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 a Peter Asher or any of those any of those people? Only recently at the fest. At the fest. Um, yeah. At the fest back in February. That was the first time I met my boss in person. Really? Yes. Oh. <laughs> After two years, finally meeting him in person. So Sirius is based in New York. That's yes, where the okay. main headquarters is. But of course, they have you know studios all over the country. They have one. The closest to me is down in Miami, which only just opened a couple of months ago. Howard Stern uh, did the first few shows over there. Um, they have, you know, a studio at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Um, they have one out in L.A. They, they have studios all over the country. Um, but I'm based. I live here in Orlando, Florida. So I, I work from here. You're seeing you're seeing yep. Sirius XM right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is where I work out of. And um, so, yeah, the only time um, I met Fran, well, actually, I met Fran Gion for the first time, at least according to my knowledge, at the fest in 2014. I played um, Name That Tune and he was the host. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, he and I, I guess, go a ways back. But I met my boss, Adam, at the fest. And then I met um, David Frick. At the fest, because we did the Sirius XM Beatles channel panel at the fest. Right. Yes, you did. Yeah, and that's uh, that's basically been it. To, and it's all because it's all. I mean, that's you can do the show anywhere you want now in the world, and work with people, and do things, yeah. and be like, "Hey, nice to meet you in person." <laughs> you know? Exactly. Yeah, for sure. No, <laughs> I, I joke all the time in our office emails about having a, a staff party. Like, when are we all going to get together and have, you know, the Beatles channel, like, Christmas party? Right. Like, something. you know, we're going to recreate the old Apple Christmas parties back in the day in the 60s. Hell yeah. <laughs> Let's get wasted. No. Um. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, but that would be amazing. And I, I mean, I may be a little biased, but I think, you know, Florida has a good draw to it. And especially at the Hard Rock here in Orlando, where I used to work, has the VIP John Lennon room. That's the perfect place for, you know, a Beatles party. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Cool. All right, so moving on to something a little more recently, and, and I, I'm, not, I'm just dying to hear what it was like to be a part of Sirius when Now and Then was dropping. Tell us about oh, that man. experience. How, 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 in a, how far in advance did you know it was coming? I didn't. So oh, really? the, the crappy thing about being away from the headquarters in New York is that basically I missed everything. And mm. so I'm sure you guys heard that there were, you know, listening parties for yeah. now and then okay. before yeah. it dropped. 
Yes, a few and of our, so, our our collaborators were at that. Yeah, right. Yep. And so, as you know, all those guys had to sign NDAs. Yep. So my boss couldn't even tell me that he had heard a new Beatles song or anything like that because he had to sign an NDA. So I was really out of the loop. I didn't find out until the public found out. Mm. Yeah, which was crazy. Um, but the morning that the song dropped, so I knew that Chris Carter was going to premiere it, right? Right. And I was going to play it second. Oh. <laughs> so I got up very early that morning to see if the song was in our computer system. Oh, you did. <laughs> Maybe was I should it? be telling the story, but <laughs> it's fine. It happened already. Yeah. Um, yes. And so I got up at the buck crack of dawn because the song was supposed to premiere at 10 a.m. Right. And I think I came to my laptop here at like seven or eight o'clock in the morning. And it, it was there in the was, system. There it was. There it was. There, there it was. <laughs> so I sat here headphones on heard it for the first time and cried my mm. eyes out just just started sobbing wow and um yeah it, it was just an unbelievable moment so chris played it at 10 i literally played it two hours later it was the first song i played that day i mean how how incredibly awesome is that you are a ho you are a DJ on the Beatles channel playing a new song the day it freaking drops. Andy, once again, if you would have told me, yeah, if you would have told me, like, not only like you said, am I on the official channel for the Beatles, but to be able to say, here's the latest single by the Beatles, that is not a sentence I ever thought I would say in my entire in life. In your life. Ever. in your life and you got to do it i got to do it and i still and i still introduce it that way i'm like here's the latest single from the beatles yeah as like, you should what the hell <laughs> <laughs> no but that that may be the biggest career highlight so far in my two years at sirius um oh yeah but before be. that it, it was when they sent me to the rock hall to cover the uh get back to let it be exhibit yeah. yep. yep um yep. which was an unbelievable experience i got to meet you know jeff jones in person i got to interview glenn johns you know that was an unbelievable experience but just to be able to say hey i've got the new beatles song right here and here it is now on the beatles channel I like, mean, and then the buzz amongst all the hosts. I mean, you all just must have been so, you know, just elated yeah. and talking and going back and forth, calls, FaceTimes, emails. Just the, yeah. the station must have just been off we were, the charts. We, uh, the funny with thing emails is, and everything else. It, it was kind of the opposite. We were all just kind of like dumbfounded, like we could not believe that this was happening. Oh, yeah, really? Yeah, wow. it, it was just kind of like, holy crap! Here it is. Here we go. You know. <laughs> Here we go. Here it is. It's it's happening. It's happening. It's really happening. Um, yeah, but it, it it will be something I will never forget in my life. And then I I've had people come up to me since then, saying I didn't listen to the ten o'clock showing. I wanted to hear you introduce it. Yeah, they okay. waited. So you then now you're you're a millennial, right? Yeah, born in eighty nine. Okay. Okay, so then your parents are, were probably what Gen Xers or early or late boomers. No, they're, they're boomers. Okay, so then give let tell us you know their thoughts on on the new song. You know what I? And my they, mom. They, do they consider that canon? Oh yeah. Okay. At least I I know my mom does. You know what? I don't really know my dad's thoughts on it. I'll have to ask him about that. <laughs> but no, um, my mom definitely. Yeah, it, it's canon. It's so funny. So when the documentary, the twelve minute documentary, came out mm. the night before, yeah, I was like, "Mom, you have to watch this right now." And I made her FaceTime me so I could see her reaction yeah. to watching it, and just the the tears were a flowing. Yeah. I so, bet. No. Oh yeah. No. She's she's and then, pro, um, pro now and then. So. And then the, and then the video. I mean, I'm sure you were sobbing watching the video. Oh my! A lot that that I put on TikTok. I put my reaction to watching the video on TikTok, where I'm literally just crying right. my eyes out. Um, do I think 
Peter Jackson went a little cray cray with some of the uh with some maybe. of the stuff with some of the yeah, stuff maybe, maybe. <laughs> just a smidgen. Yeah. but nothing will beat that first experience of just watching it and being like wow right. this is amazing i mean and andy you and i've talked about this before it reminds you of what it was like in 1995 oh. with the 100%. anthology 100%. which that was which that was the first thing in our lifetime to be such a huge beatles and new global and this is moment like, like yeah. holy crap new beatles like and to think that 28 years later we were going to get that same feeling again, we never, never thought that was going to happen, happen again. Never yeah. thought it was going to happen. Amazing. Yeah, Isn't it really great? is. Now, how many how many uh, editions of the vinyl did you get between the seven inch and the twelve inch thing? Did you get them I all? Got, I uh, no, I got three of them. So I got the blue and white marble. I got the Target one. Yeah. And I got the cassette. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Amazing. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, what a what a time to be there. Um shifting it now towards our two legs, our guy, Paul. <laughs> Kaylin, please tell us your top ten all time favorite Paul slash wing songs. If you can. Or right now, you know. <laughs> this was so damn hard, you guys. So I would just like to say for the record that all the like basic hits, of course, yeah. I love. You know, your band on the run, your jet, right. um, my love, maybe I'm amazed. You know, those are things that I, I absolutely love and adore. Um, I did a top 12. Is that okay? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't knock these songs off. Are, are you one of those people that, that do have like a bona fide favorite McCartney song? Can you can you like say what you're like when somebody says right now right in front of you what is your favorite McCartney song without answering but can, could could you do that at any point in time? Yeah. Okay. Then you know. Yeah, okay. Good. Okay. But go ahead. Please continue. It's silly love songs. Okay. <laughs> and it goes back to discovering Wings for the first time and hearing Wingspan, and I couldn't believe that there was such a beautiful piece of music out there that. I hadn't heard. I couldn't believe it. And it's one of his most popular songs. And I had no clue about it. Um, the, the bass line, the horns, yeah. the strings. And of course, my favorite part that I've said a million times on my show is yeah. that three part, three part harmony cor chorale yeah. at the end. Yeah, cor yeah right. Yep. Yeah. It, it gives me goosey bumps every time I hear it. I will defend silly love songs till the end. I will die on that hill. <laughs> love it. Okay, so without further ado, my top 12 because I couldn't go get it down to 10. Go. And in no particular order, by the way, because that would have been a whole other would, mess. I wouldn't have been able to do that. It would have stressed you out. Oh, yeah, totally stressed me out. So in no particular order, my top 12 favorite McCartney songs, silly love songs, Bluebird, Smile Away, Eat at Home, wow. No More Lonely Nights, mm. So Bad, mm. Getting Closer, yeah. Listen to What the Man Said, Fine Line, My Brave mm. Face, Happy With You, and Hey Diddle. Okay. Hey Diddle. Oh. Very That's diverse, similar. very yeah. across the 80s, 70s, yeah. a little 2005 yeah. from Chaos. Hey, happy with you from Egypt Station. Good pull. I love happy with you. When I started, when I heard that, I had to immediately pick up my guitar and figure out how to play it. Yeah, because it's so gorgeous. It's so simple, but it's see that's what I love about McCartney. It's so simple. It's beautiful. The his melodies are just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And just that beautiful pop sensibility. Is there I a you have like that track that nobody else loves besides silly love songs. I mean, well, silly love songs I think is 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 pretty much loved for the most part. But do you have like that one song where it's like, oh, I don't know if I should want everybody to know that this is one of the songs that I, <laughs> that I love. I don't know. I mean, all the the ones that I have listed here are really the ones that like anytime it comes on, like on shuffle, 
right. are, are the ones that I'm turning up and, you know, listening to and screaming at the top of my lungs. Um, no, when no more lonely nights comes on, I do those background vocals. Like it's no one's business. Na, 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 na. <laughs> like na, you, na, you na, don't, na, na. Yep. that's my favorite. <laughs> like, that's it girl. Yeah. I love that so much. Right, so now um, I'm going to put you on the spot. Ooh, oh crap. Okay. What is your favorite Paul album? Start to finish. I can't say Wings fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, that does okay. not count. Damn it. Um, I was just say, what's your favorite Paul album today? Because it all it changes all the it time. It always changes. Yeah. If you have to do like uh, from Ram, it has Ram. to be Ram. Okay. Ram is Ram and Band on the Run are like everything to me. Perfect. Perfect. Sorry perfect. for my my cat. I hope I you see. Can't we hear have her. a cameo. We have a cameo <laughs> for those of the watching the video that's, version. That's, that's Lucy. It's her dinner time. Hello, uh, Lucy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sorry if you hear my kitty crunching back there. She's she's having her dinner. Um. But yeah. No. It'd have to be Ram. Awesome, Caitlin. Have please. you read? Uh, well, have, have you read the McCartney Legacy? I'm curious. No, I have not. So I'll be completely honest with you guys. I hate to read. <laughs> I hate reading. Um, I'm the type of person that I usually like to get my information visually. Mm. So if there's like a documentary or a YouTube video or a biopic, like that's usually how I kind of gather all my information. I have like the worst attention span in the entire world. And reading, I'm just like. Bip, 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 bip. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but. I, I I would. <laughs> well, I mean, make, that's make like a it's, make a movie about it. Make a right. well, well, there is. There's going to be a documentary yeah, coming documentary. out at the end of 2024 called "Man on the Run." I'm well, so excited. Working title. Working title called "Man on the Run," yeah. and we think the yeah. end of 2024. But yeah, yeah, yeah. that it will basically kind of give you a lot of what's in that book since you're not a <laughs> since you don't like to read. But it, is that horrible to admit? Like no. that, that is pretty horrible to admit. I'm, I hate but, reading, and, no. and people send me books all the time. And you're like, this is nice. It's a nice like, cover, hey, nice pictures, thanks. but I'm not gonna read it. <laughs> Funny. No, you're honest, and that's the great. That's the great thing about it. It's not you're not into it, which is fine. Yeah. yeah. No, not which a is reader. totally fine. But no, I am excited for the possible man on, on the run because I watch the Wingspan documentary all the time. Yeah. I, I think yeah. I just watched it a few weeks ago. I, I'll watch it like twice a year. Over over under ten. On the next McCartney record, how many different color vinyls will have? Over, oh, under 10. Over. Always over. Oh, yeah. Always. always. Over. Over. Over always. 10. You should see yeah. how many copies of Egypt Station and McCartney 3 and McCartney 3 Imagined oh. I have back here. 20? Uh, I'm you, it's, yeah. <laughs> Probably 20 there. right there if I had to guess it's, for sure. It's not stop. It's, non it's the gift that keeps on giving, really. Oh, yeah. Bring it on. Bring well, it. Did you get the, um, the three-year anniversary one? And which one did you get? I didn't. No. Um, oh, you didn't go for that one. No, I didn't go for that one. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. At, I couldn't at that point. No. Um, <laughs> Caitlin, tell us about your schedule at Sirius, where people can find you, your social medias and all and sure, the like. And yeah. All that good so, stuff. Man, I am all over the place. But first of all, you can hear my shows weekdays, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, Channel 18 on the Beatles channel, Monday through Friday. <laughs> Um, you can always send me an email if you ever have any requests, things you want to hear. Um, if you want to keep it Paul specific, every Wednesday, I do Wednesday Wings to end my show. It's my favorite little weekly tradition where I'll play like a very cool Wings rarity. Uh, so, oh. you know, the stuff you basically won't hear, you know, throughout the day, you know. Right. Um, and so you can always send me an email, Kate. C-A-I-T at SiriusXM.com. You can also follow me on Twitter at Caitlin Larkin. Then on Instagram, Caitlin Larkin 089. And then I also have a little Facebook fan page thing uh, where it's just simply my name, Caitlin Larkin. And you can reach out to me on any of those social media platforms. I'm addicted to my phone. I am a millennial. I will respond to you. <laughs> love it love it um thomas what's cooking in the fire for talk more talk in the gang 
Well, uh, as, as everybody knows that watched, we, we did part one of our look at the Rob Sheffield uh, 100 uh, or his version of his 100. Can I can I speak on that, by the way? Yeah, how please. Blue, how Bluebird is 88 on that list? I cannot forgive that man. If I ever well, see him on the street, talk about it. it's, it's, I'm going to yeah. flick him in the nose. <laughs> Uh, I, mean, I look at it. I look at it this way. At least he acknowledges it as one of the you know one hundred greatest. You know, I look at it that way. At least, yeah, it's, yeah, at least it's there. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you guys, whatever yeah. should should be that. Long. <laughs> Anyways, so we're going to be doing part two where we look at fifty uh, to to number one, and uh, that that'll be a lot of fun. And we had a great time doing uh, doing that first part, and uh, we're going to have a great time doing the second part. So that's that's that. I'm sure on the next episode after that, we'll take a look at the new Ringo EP. Uh, we'll we'll do our review on that, and Crooked, uh, it's called Crooked Boy, right? Um, I think that that's what it's called. Yeah, and then yeah. uh, it's always fun reviewing uh, new music, whether it's it's whether it's from uh, from Paul or Ringo or any of the the back catalog stuff that comes out from John George or or from Paul. You know, we we have a great time uh, reviewing that, especially if there's something that we haven't heard before, like uh, like it's not on from the, uh, the from the Pipes of Peace uh, box. Oh. Uh, you know, uh, how, how 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 exciting was that to hear that for the first time? <laughs> it's like what where, where has it been sitting on this thing for? 35 years yeah. come on <laughs> man the stuff that that man must have in his vault right uh, right uh, yeah release so, just, release just all release just, just just give us everything right so um you know as as uh as we said before we're really getting close to that 2k uh, uh subs on on uh, on our youtube channel so please uh hit the uh, hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet already we really appreciate everybody checking out our show and we appreciate and we love having wonderful guests like caitlin larklin to present to everybody out there to 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 watch and hear her story and uh yeah exactly <laughs> so <laughs> excellent yeah. excellent all good you things well caitlin you. come hella high water we got to get you to chicago gal come yeah. on man yeah I, I really hope so and if not chicago then definitely new york of course yeah of course sure. but we'll you know we'll, we, we will talk before then and hopefully we can make it happen because man you are an asset to the beetle community you're yeah, you're you. the beetle family man you, know, we got, you gotta we gotta get you out there and uh, it's been an honor to have you on two legs god it was you know we could talk forever and thank you for yeah, your time could. Yeah. No, thank you so much for having me, you guys. It's such a pleasure. Yeah. I, I love talking McCartney with you anytime you want to. Right. Excellent. Well, for Kate, for Tom, I'm Andy. We will see you next time on the next episode of Two Legs. Have a good night. Take care. Bye. 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 Listening to Two Legs, a Paul McCartney podcast, hosted by Tom Hunyadi and Andy Nichols, with musical contributions by Dylan.